everybody. I know it's been a long day already, hasn't it? And you guys want to get done. Well, we're going to pack so much into 90 minutes, it'll feel like 15, and you'll want more. Sound good? OK. How many people have never used Illustrator before? Awesome. So the rest of you already know what's going on. Good. Fantastic. Well, I'm Jason Hoppy, and I want to show you all the cool stuff about Illustrator. And for those of you that have never used Illustrator before, we're going to make this really easy for you. And for those of you that have used Illustrator before, you can show off to the person next to you and also learn a whole bunch of cool things as well. Sound good? OK. So for those of you out there in the Illustrator world or new to the Illustrator world, I love Illustrator. And I have been using Illustrator all the way since like Illustrator 0.88, before it was even a real Illustrator. I know, which is like way old. Yeah. So I've always loved Illustrator. Um, I've always uh, taught Illustrator here at Adobe Max. And um, so teaching the beginning Illustrator is always fun because we're going to teach you all this cool stuff. And 90 minutes doesn't seem like a lot of time, so we've got to get going here. A couple things before we get started. Um, we have our helpers in the back there. If you need anything whatsoever, make sure you get the help, OK? Because if you get a little bit behind, things are going to start to spiral pretty quickly. One thing that I did notice when I tested some of these things on the machine, when you open up the Assets folder, and this class is L242, if you open up that uh, presentation that we have, there's two files in that L242. One is the presentation, which we can work with. The other one's the assets. The assets is just a smaller file. It's a duplicate of the one that we're going to be working with here. Um, but this is the L242 presentation. One thing I notice is that when you use your selection tool and try to do something with it, nothing happens. So you may want to open it up and then close out of that again, then open it up again, and it seems to work its magic. OK? Just so you don't get stuck, wanted to let you know. So do that now. And if you've used Illustrator before, click on something, then click on something. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, close out of it, open it back up again. Wonderful. And if it works for you, awesome. Go buy a lottery ticket because you are lucky. So yes? Illustrator just the file? Just the file. Just close out of the yeah, file. Illustrator isn't a problem. Well, yes, it is, but it's all new. OK, so a couple things that I want to show you right here. First of all, um, I've been teaching Illustrator for quite a long time. And for those of you that are new to Illustrator, I do an Illustrator blog every week and have for years. And this is my blog, jasonhoppy.com. And all these cool things we do every single week. Why do I show you this? Because Illustrator is one of those tools that a lot of people say, I can't draw, I can't create. And the answer is, yes, you can. You can certainly create, you can certainly draw, you can certainly illustrate, and you can create icons. Whether you think you can or not, I make this really easy for you. And this blog, you can sign up for it, and every Monday morning in your email inbox, you'll get the latest thing that I've just done, and we walk you through it. Yes, all this stuff really cool is real, really cool. It looks really cool, and it really is quite easy. So Illustrator, you can be as creative as you want to be, and I show you how you just use basic shapes for all this stuff. There is no real drawing involved here. And when you're a beginning in Ill beginner in Illustrator, what's the best thing to do? Have some cool projects that you can work on. These look complicated. They are not at all complicated. It's all just basic shapes. We're going to show you everything in this 90-minute class here to build every single one of these without any problem whatsoever. Yes, you can. If you never thought you could, these are the 90 minutes that will change your life. OK? I kid you not. I'm just going to give you a really quick preview of this little pencil doodle. This could take five minutes. All it is is some very basic shapes. And you put a couple other basic shapes on there. You put a little black tip. You put some doodles together, and it's that fast. OK? So if this looks crazy to you, awesome, because in 90 minutes, it will be so incredibly simple that, yes, you can do all of these. And if you want to sign up for the blog, you certainly can. Um, right there is a little sign up. You can put it in there and you'll get everything. I did this today for the conference. A couple little ovals, great little head right there. Threw that in there. That was last week's. Let's get started. Sound good? Sounds great to me. Wonderful. Okay, so with the presentation open here, I just want to start with some very basic things with Illustrator so that everybody's on board. First of all, 
you may want to change the color of the interface on there. Yours may be a dark interface with light type, and this is one of these things that we can change very simply. If you go to your Illustrator menu in the upper left-hand corner, this is where you're going to set your preferences. Go to your preferences, and we've got our user interface preferences, and when you call that up, you've got four different ways to go ahead and bake the interface. Extra crispy, crispy, regular recipe, and light and happy. Set your interface, what's ever going to work really good for you, and then click OK. Because if it wasn't OK, there would be an OK button. So starting off with just understanding the interface here, this version of Illustrator, they have gone ahead and cleaned up the toolbar and made it a little bit more simple for you. The toolbar is nested over on the left-hand side, and if you double-click on the top portion of the toolbar here, I'm just going to zoom in so you can see this. If you double-click on the little gray portion of the toolbar, you can pull that toolbar off anywhere that you'd like on the screen, and you can also click on the little double-ended arrow if you'd like to make that a two-column toolbar rather than a single-column toolbar. I like the two-column toolbar. That's what I've used. Okay, doesn't change the toolbar. It just makes it however you'd like to use it. So with this toolbar, you can also snap that back to the side as well, like you can with any of your panels, just by pulling it over and touching the side of your screen until you see that little blue, and it snaps right in there. That's your toolbar. Now as we go through, there's going to be a lot of tools you're going to use all the time. Drawing tools, that's what Illustrator does. And so we have our basic shape drawing tools. You can click your mouse and hold on that. You get your little flyout menu. It shows you the different tools that you can go ahead and use. And I would like to go ahead and keep this little panel up here all the time. Instead of having to switch my tools and go over to the toolbar, click and hold, and then wait for it to fly out, I want to go ahead and do what's called a tear-off. And this is unique to Illustrator. If you click and hold and you move your mouse to the right-hand side of that bar, you'll see the little arrow. It will get dark, and that's a tear-off. This gives you all of the tools that you need to go ahead and do your creation. Okay? I have an extra one in there. I'm going to show you how to put those tools in there as well. Because you can manage your tools. You can put the tools in there that you'd like. You can remove the tools that you don't want. And you can do that all at the bottom of your toolbar with those three dots. You'll see in the updates you're going to have these three dots in a lot of the Adobe applications, and this is where your additional tools are going to be. Any tools that you would like that are not in your toolbar right now, you can go and you can choose from this additional tool menu, and you can select any one of the tools, and to bring them into your toolbar, you will need to, you can't just drag them in there, it's going to be in you know, frustrating because you can't just drag them in. If you'd like them into your toolbar, what you have to do is you have to hold down your option key. We're going to use the option key a lot. Option key is going to be your new best friend. So if you hold down the option key and option click and drag the tool into the toolbar, you'll see that you'll get the little plus cursor and you can drop it in wherever you'd like and those will add, that will add the tools that are not there in the additional tools. Okay? So if you want extra tools, you can put them in there customize this yourself. Now in terms of customization, let's go under our window menu. And at the top, we have our workspaces. We've set up a specific workspace just for this class, which is L242. And what we've done is we've gone and we've given you the panels that we're going to need for today's class. And the panels are sitting over there on the right-hand side to transform the property panels and the artboard. And when you go, when you choose that workspace, that's going to set all your panels. Now, depending on what you do for work or creativity here, you can go and you can choose from a whole bunch of existing workspaces that are right here under the workspace menu. So if I'm going to be working on typography, I can choose typography from that workspace. And what that will do is that will set me up with all of the panels here that Illustrator thinks would be useful for typography. You can edit these by moving these around, and you can add more panels as necessary, and make this your own workspace. Once you get your workspace to where you want it to be, your tool set the way you want to, the panels that you use, you can capture this workspace by going under the window menu under workspace and creating a new workspace right there. 
So set this up however is going to work very well for you. Get your panels where they want to be, set your preferences, adjust your tools, your interface, and now you can work with it freely. And if you ever need to switch back and forth, you have this set as a preset. Works great. The Adobe applications allow you to do that. So you create a new workspace. You name it. You click OK. And that workspace now shows up there under the window, workspace, right at the very top. So that's how we created the workspace for this with our transform property and artboard panels. Okay? Simple stuff. I know some of you are like, we've already heard this. I know, but the other people haven't. There we go. Okay. So that's basically it. We have 16 artboards in here. No, they're not pages. Okay? We want to call them pages. I know you want to call them pages. They so look like pages, but they're not. They're artboards, okay? This is Illustrator, okay? InDesign has pages. Illustrator has artboards, okay? And for those of you that have been around long enough, you know what an artboard is. That's where you used to do everything by hand. Okay, artboards. Well, we want to navigate through these artboards. I set this whole file up in Illustrator, and I want to navigate through the artboards here. And so our artboard panel should be up on the right-hand side. So if you click on the name Artboard, it should pop up right there. Named all the artboards so we can navigate through all of this. And to navigate through the artboards, go into your artboard panel and just double click on any one of the numbers of the artboard. If you double click on the name on the artboard, that will allow you to change the name of the artboard. If you click on the artboard icon to the right, on that, that will allow you to edit the artboard size and location. So you can do a whole lot with the artboard panel, not just navigating, but editing as well. So double click on the number, gets you to your artboard. You can also use the scroll wheel. If it, okay, so with that, open the other file that's in the L242, um, open up the presentation one. So, yes, that's the one. Yep, that's it. They had me break out both just the artwork stuff and the entire presentation. So, and that kind of stuff, feel free, don't even raise your hand, just scream it right out. I'm from New York, nothing bothers me. Okay, it's all good. I can take it. Absolutely. Okay, so navigate through your artboards quickly. You can navigate just using the scroll wheel of your mouse as well. And another way to quickly navigate is down in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, way down at the bottom. I'll zoom in for you, too. Not that far. Okay. And you'll have a number with a little drop-down menu there, and that will also be a way that you can navigate through all of your artboards quickly if your mouse is in that corner of the screen. Okay. Great way to navigate through that. There we go. All right. There's our artboards. There's our panels. Let's go to the next artboard. Moving around the page. Zooming in, zooming out, navigating through our document here. We have our zoom tool in our toolbar that is also nested with our hand tool as well. That too can become a tear off if you'd like to use the zoom or the hand tool. They also have shortcuts there. Z for the zoom tool, H for the hand tool. Makes total sense, doesn't it? However, for people that have been using Adobe applications for quite some time, I have found that not everybody knows the magic to the zoom in the hand tool. Did you know there was magic to it? Like I said, the best 90 minutes ever. Okay, here it is. So zooming in and zooming out, we do that all the time. If you take the zoom tool, obviously it's in, ad, in zoom mode, and you simply click and you click, and of course it bounces all over the page when it does that. Okay, we're going to zoom back out really fast. So I want you to go back over to your zoom tool and uh, select your hand tool from that right there. And I want you to double click on your hand tool. Oh my gosh, what just happened? You zoomed back out. Absolutely. Okay. When you zoom into something and you want to zoom back out very quickly, double clicking on the hand tool is going to fit everything right back into the window for you. Pretty handy, isn't it? Yes, it is. Now, if you want to zoom in, and you want to zoom in without clicking multiple times, what you're going to do is take the zoom tool and just simply click and drag to the right to zoom in. No more click, click, click. All right? Now, of course, it's nice and big, and you want to be able to zoom back out. 
course, there's multiple ways to zoom back out. One of them is double clicking on the hand tool. It's very simple to do. And go back to the hand tool right there and double click and get it back there. Now, because it's nested together, it's kind of a pain to have to go through that. So this is a perfect time to go and select your zoom in your hand tool, get your little tear off and put them right there so that you can have quick access to all of that. So zoom tool, drag over what you want to zoom into, double click on the hand tool right back in it. Sure. So click on the tools that are nested together, hold down your mouse, move over to the right hand side until the bar highlights right there. That simple. Mm -hmm. I know, amazing, isn't it? Every time I do that, I love it. OK, there it is. Under the View menu as well, how many shortcut junkies do we have out there? OK. Oh, come on, everybody. Just Even if you're not, raise your hand. Come on. There you go. Much better. That's how it's supposed to be. Under the View menu, for those of you that love shortcuts here, these are all the shortcuts. OK? Zoom in, zoom out. Command plus, command minus. Absolutely. These are in all the Adobe applications. Fit to window is command zero. Actual size is command one. Awesome. There they are. Now, a couple other ways that you can actually get around your document here. And this is pretty awesome. We, we're going to be working on building things very quickly. And you're going to want to move around here without stopping and getting your hand tool to move around. Scroll bars went out with VHS. Okay. Long ago, far away, and I see people grabbing a scroll bar, and I just I want to take the mouse away forever. Okay. No more scroll bar. So if I've got my selection tool and I'm doing something, and I would like to move my page around, whatever tool you're in, just simply hold down your space bar, and you get your hand tool for as long as you hold down the space bar. Okay. Doesn't matter what tool you're in. Hold the space bar, you get your hand tool, do whatever you need to do with a hand tool, and when you're done, let go, and it goes right back to the tool that you were using. Yes, this works in all the other applications out there, folks. Photoshop, InDesign, all that stuff. Yes, it does. Okay? The hand tool. Now, if you really want to get to be a shortcut junkie, if the space bar is the hand tool, if you hold down your command and then your space bar, you get the zoom tool. I know. Okay? These are things that just make navigating around the whole thing really good. And even if you don't want to use Illustrator all the time, Photoshop and InDesign work the exact same way. So good stuff here. Okay. We can also scroll through by using our scroll wheels here, scrolling through all of our um, artboards. And if you really want to go a little bit crazy, if you hold down your Option key while you scroll, a little goes a long way. Option scroll up or down will allow you to zoom in and zoom out really fast. Okay? For those of you people that are very impatient, option and then scroll up and down, zooms in, zooms out. If that totally freaked you out, go back to the hand tool, double click on the hand tool, snaps it right back into position. Okay? Good stuff. All right, so now we know how to open a file, scroll around it, get the artboards, break a few things. There it is. I think we should move on to creating a new document. So to create a new document, we've done this before. File, new. In the new document, you're going to come up with any of your recent files that you've worked on. And you also have the ability to set up documents based on whatever creative process that you want to be working with. Mobile, web, print, video, art, and illustration. And whenever you click on any one of these options on the upper portion of that panel, it gives you common sizes as well as different units of measurement here. If you're going to be working on the web, you're going to be dealing with pixels. If you want to be working with print, you can deal with millimeters, inches, whatever you'd like. This also allows you to go through and access any of the Adobe stock right through here. So if you want to open up a template or you want to get some ideas, they offer a lot of free things right here that you can just open up, see, get in there, and just start with that. All right there in the window. Anything that you want to create that's very simple, you choose the size. If you don't find the presets, you can go ahead and choose and edit the presets here, horizontal or vertical, and simply click Create. And there's your new window. Everything comes up as a tab. So you'll see at the top of your window, you'll have your new untitled document. And then you can always just go back and you can tab through all the other files you have open. 
The other way, if you have lots of Illustrator files open, if you are an Illustrator hoarder and you have 60 files open, you can't find the tab that you're looking at, go into the window menu. At the very bottom of the window menu is every window that you have open, hence the window menu. Ah, I can see clearly now. That's what a window's for, okay? Yeah. So, a couple of different, yeah, absolutely. Great question. In your artboard panel, go to on the right-hand side where you see the little artboard icon right there and simply click once and that will allow you to edit that artboard. Yep, right there. Nice and simple. If you've created a new document, the orientation isn't correct, you need to change the size, you want more than one artboard, not a problem. Click on that artboard panel, click on the artboard icon, and you can add artboards, you can delete them, you can navigate around, change the size, so there it is, click on the artboard, edit that, change the sizes however I'd like, larger, smaller, you name it, change the orientation, click OK, and you're done. That's what the artboard panel does. So you can navigate, but you can also edit through that as well. If you would like to make art, multiple artboards, you can click on this, and this will allow you to go ahead and edit your artboard that you have, but also down here at the bottom, it gives you a nice little hint. Option drag the cursor to duplicate the artboard. Hmm. And we're gonna show you that very shortly because once we show you the option click and drag, that's gonna be awesome as well. Yeah, if you do create a new file, you do have the choice of as many artboards as you like, but yes, we're gonna add some more, but we're gonna show you the option click and drag because that's gonna be your new best friend because some people already know what that is. Yes, absolutely. For those of you that don't, oh my gosh. Okay? All righty. So there we are with our new document. Now we're going to get into drawing some shapes because that's what it's all about in Illustrator. Shapes, type, color, making it all happen. So in our basic toolbar here, we have our rectangle, we have our oval, polygon, star tool, and the things that we can create with this are out of this world. So very basic shapes. I've shown you how to go over and click on the shapes, Hit the tear off, pull them off here so you have those shapes readily available for you, and we can run right through all of the basic shapes. Circles, squares, polygons, stars, arc, and then a line. So here's what we're going to do really quick. I'm just going to run through kind of the basic stuff with drawing. Everybody knows how to click and drag? Of course you do. Okay. So we're going to show you, I've given you kind of references here which you can read, but we're going to jump right into creating the shapes right here. And what I'm going to tell you now is basically what's right on this page. So when you want to go back and you want to have reference, this is exactly what we're going to do. Okay? So let's jump over to artboard number five, waiting no longer, and here we go. All right, we're going to start off with our rectangle tool. Choose the rectangle tool. You have your cursor, and of course, you simply click and drag, and that is your shape. Your colors in there may not be the same because of the default, probably just black and white. Worry not, we're going to have color in here in no time. There's the shape. Okay. Now, the tool that we use to edit all of our shape is our selection tool. So very first tool in the toolbar right there, the shortcut is the letter V. We're going to get used to that. I'll mention that several times. Our selection tool. You want to do anything with it, you got to select it first. So with our selection tool, we're ready to go. I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to use my wonderful zoom tool. I'm going to zoom in really big, and I'm going to show off and use my space bar to get my hand tool to move that all around. With our selection tool, we can select our shape, we can edit our shape, and we can rotate this. With our pull handles on the edges here, on any one of the corners, I'm going to zoom in big so we can see this. Any one of the pull handles, corner, midsection, we can click and pull, and we can change the shape of our object. Okay? Just like anything else. I'm sure you've done this before, you see pull handles, you can go ahead and pull them. Rotating them, however, we're going to go, we're going to go slightly outside the pull handle. Don't touch the pull handle, okay? Just outside it, pretend it's wet paint and you're getting very close, but don't touch it, okay? Outside the corner, just hover slightly outside, you'll get your little rounded arrow, and that allows you to rotate. You simply click and rotate. You get a tool hint showing you the angle of rotation. Well, what I'm going to show you here is what happens if I'd like to just rotate this like 45 degrees. Select the shape, hover outside, hold down your shift key, 
your second best friend is the shift key, your first one's going to be the option key. When you hold down shift and you rotate, this is going to snap it to 0, 45, or 90 degrees. You ever want to get it just right? You'll never get it just right with a tool hint. You'll get so close, but you just won't be able to taste it. Okay? There it is. You all know Command-Z, right? To undo. Oh, yes, we do. Okay? If only we use that in real life. All right, so there's our, there's our basic shape. Now, what happens if we start off, and I'd like to draw a shape a very specific size? Okay? I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to select this and hit delete to get rid of it. I'm going to go back, and I can do this with any of my tools. If I need to draw a shape a very specific size, I'm not going to draw the shape and then size it afterwards. I'm going to draw, I'm not actually going to draw the shape. Okay? I'm going to take the tool that I'd like to draw and just simply click with a tool on your document. Enter in the values that you'd like that shape to be. I'm using the tab key to jump back and forth between the fields. And then you simply click OK, and there's the shape. Okay? Anytime you need to draw something that size, take the draw tool, click on it, calls up the dialog box, you set the sizes, you click OK, and everything's golden. You don't care about the size, you just want a perfect square. You need to make it perfect. Okay? Click and drag. While you're dragging with this, okay? there's times to let go, this is not a time to let go. While you're dragging, <laughs> while you're dragging your tools, and this can't be boring, you guys have to have fun doing this. While you're drawing any of your shapes, when you introduce the shift key, shift is going to constrain. Okay? And yeah, doesn't make any difference, even a line. Hold down the shift key. The key to this is let go of the mouse first and then let go of the shift key. Okay? Shift constraints whenever you're drawing anything. Perfect squirrel is perfect squirrel. I guess there is a perfect squirrel. Perfect square, perfect circle, perfect line. Hold down the shift key while you're drawing. Awesome. The circle tool, same thing. Okay? We know how to draw a circle. We know how to draw an oval. We can edit this shape by using our selection tool. If we want a circle that's a certain size, take the circle tool, click on our artboard, enter in the value that you want to have that circle or the ellipse be, click OK, and it's now that size. Of course, if we want to scale it, we can go back to our move tool, and we can hold down our shift key, and I want to keep this circle a perfect circle while I'm making it bigger or smaller. So what do I hold down? The shift key. Of course, it's so wonderful. There it is. Fantastic. Shift key, while I'm scaling, scales it up or down. Wonderful. How much more easy could it be? Don't think much more easy, but it can certainly get more fun. The polygon tool. <gasps> Do you know how many people did not know you had a triangle in Illustrator? I have had people that work for years and they're just like, I make my own triangles. It's kind of like Pido. It's like, no, I, I can't do the store-bought triangles. I have to have my own. I'd just like to tell you folks, a triangle is a three-sided polygon. If you didn't know that, now you know the secret's out. Okay? Now, when you're drawing, the defaults are going to be a hexagon. So while you're drawing, okay, there's times to let go. This is not a time to let go. While you're drawing with the mouse, okay, just go ahead and draw something. Keep the mouse held down. Use your up arrow to add sides. Use your down arrow to take away the sides. Now, the one crazy thing, when you're doing something like this, you want that flat side to be level. Because if anybody has ever tried to then rotate this so that that side is perfectly level when you're done, never going to happen. Did you ever try to pick up sand in a windstorm with tweezers? Never going to happen. So when you're doing this, hold down your shift key after you've added or subtracted your sides to get that side to be flat. And now you can breathe a sigh of relief because this is beautiful. Okay. Now, you've just set the preset for this tool. Okay, every time you draw with this tool, that's your new preset. Very simple. Now I can just draw, and there it goes. If you would like to edit this shape without drawing it, you can take the polygon tool and simply click anywhere on your artboard, and it's going to call up the size that you want for your um, shape, as well as the number of sides. The star tool and the polygon tool actually draw from the middle, so the radius is going to be half of the width of your shape. Okay. That requires math. So if you don't know math and you know your polygon has to be 100 millimeters wide, just type in 100 millimeters divided by 2 because, oh, whoops, is this a calculator? Yes, it is. OK, there it is. Okay. Yes, you can do calculations in here without a calculator. Okay. 
these fields allow you to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, whatever that is. I'm a creative person, yeah. Okay, so those are the basic shapes. Now, let's jump over to our star tool. I'm just gonna select these and delete those. Here we are with the star tool. We draw the star tool. Of course, when you hold down our shift key, its legs are firmly planted, so we're not getting this rotating star. You're all a star. Awesome. Would you like to be a more pointed star? Would you like to have more rays of light? Okay. All right. So here's what we do with the star. While you're drawing the star tool, click and drag. Don't let go of the mouse. Up arrow is going to add points. Down arrow is going to take them. I know. Freak it out. Totally. <laughs> okay. But of course, don't let go yet, because if you let go, you got to start all over again, which may not be a bad thing, because it's fun, okay? Like I said, told you don't let go. Now, while we're drawing the shape too, I want you to hold down your command key. While you're holding down the command key, pull away from the center, wow, and go ahead and push in toward the center, okay? Oh my gosh, there it is. You know what we just did? Lisa Simpson hair. You just did it. Yes. Yes, there is a weird thing that happens. Okay, and I'm going to show you. We'll get to that in about 30 seconds. Okay, so yes, it's a known problem, and I have not been able to fix that problem. You get the star that's just lines and nothing else. Yes. Good job. Great way of breaking. Yes, and you can't get it back. Okay. So here's the star. If you take the star tool and simply click on the document with the star tool, it allows you to set your radius one and radius two. Let me just show you what radius one and radius two is. Radius one is from the center to the furthest most point. Radius two is from the center to the closest most point right there, and then you set the number of sides. The problem with the tool, and I don't know why it won't reset, is if you have one of these set to zero, it sticks at zero. Okay, it's a known problem. I did put in a bug fix for this, okay? And you can't get it back. You can type a number in here and then it still doesn't work correctly. Yeah, probably resetting your preferences may do it, okay? Yeah, so this is how you can set up a star. This is probably less intuitive right here, the inner radius, outer radius right there. Larger number is centered to the point. Other number is centered to the inside point right there. Wonderful, okay? Great. There's our basic shapes. Now just to make sure we've got everything in here. Yep, we've got all that. One more thing about our basic shapes before we move on here. A couple things that I want to show you. Okay. Whenever we draw a rectangle or we draw an ellipse or a circle, we're always drawing from one corner and pulling from that one corner. You'll notice when we draw a polygon, they always draw from the middle. Where we click, that's where it um, originates from. And when we draw the star, well, why would I want to draw a box or a circle from the middle of something? Well, maybe I want to line up the center with something on the page. If I would like to draw the circle or the square from the center, I select the circle or the square tool. And before I begin to draw, I'm going to zoom in really big here. We're going to make the cursor loud because, as you know, if people don't understand, you speak louder. So we just do that visually. So here it is. I'm ready to draw my shape. If I hold down my option key, you see what my cursor does? It shows me I'm going to draw from the center. And when I have the rectangle, it shows me I'm drawing from the center. And sure enough, when I click, it draws from the center. And if I go and I take my ellipse, shortcut for that is L, and I hold down my option key, that also draws from the center instead of from the edge. Beautiful. Okay, Great for drawing lines. When you put your cursor in the middle and you'd like a line right there, yes, it works with the line. Thank you for asking. Because mm -hmm. I know that was your next question. Anticipation. All right. Who likes to mess with stuff? Okay. Corner widgets. Oh my God, what an awesome name. Corner widgets. Who would not like to go in and spend some time widgeting? Okay. <laughs> Here it is. So we can fidget with the widgets and create all these awesome things. What are widgets? Well, widgets are these little targets in the corner of my shape. I'm just going to set, turn my stroke down here so we can see that. Those little targets, those are my corner widgets. Anything with a corner is going to have a corner widget. So go to your selection tool. V is your shortcut. Click on the widget and pull that in toward the center. You have just been widgeted. Mm -hmm. 
I know. <sighs> Who'd have thought that corners would have been so boring and we need rounded ones? Delicious. Okay. And now, of course, now that you've just learned that, now you want, it's like, no, I only want to do one. Of course you only want to do one. Here's how you do just one. Take your selection tool and simply click on that corner widget. I call it the little fat little donut. Okay, right there. And what you've just done is you've targeted this so you can now go in and you can just pull that one corner separately. Oh, no, I'm sorry. When, once you do this, you have to put in another quarter. <laughs> no, once you do that, so click on that corner widget. It turns into the little chunky donut. Okay, and you can edit that separately. Now, once you let go, it goes back to the normal corner widget. So, you ever want to create like a stylized leaf? Of course you can. You click on one of those corner widgets, target that specific widget. You can pull that all the way out to the corner and de-widget it. You can click on the opposite one, turn it into the fat donut, and de-widget it. And then you can go in and click on your other donuts one at a time, and you can widget those. Oh, I didn't target that first. And do it like that. Now you just have a stylized leaf or a really cool, you know, some type of icon where you can put some type in there. I know, fantastic. You have read my mind. I'm no longer satisfied with rounded corners. Okay? So if I go in and I take my uh, selection tool and I hover over any one of the corner widgets, it, it is not an unhappy little cursor right there. That's just showing you that's a curve. I know it looks like an unhappy cursor. It's not, a happy cur it's not an unhappy one. I want you to take your uh, selection tool, hover over any one of the corner widgets, and I want you to hold down your option key because option gives us options. And I would like you to then option click on those corners. And what this does is this will allow me to go in and it will allow me to take whatever corners I have and option click through the three different styles we have. Rounded, inverse rounded, and flat. Now, in our properties panel, when we have our properties panel, we can go through and we can actually see the visual of these rounded corners, flat corners, okay? Because not everybody's going to want to get in here and do all these corner widgets the way we want to. So if we go over to our properties panel, we have in our properties panel, we have the transform section, and then we've got this little dot, dot, dot with more options. That more options gives us the different types of corners here. If you unlink the chain between the four corners here, this allows me to edit my corners separately and then get the result and do a larger or smaller radius. I can go ahead and do a rounded. I can do a flat. I can do an inverse rounded. And if I want to shut them off, simply just run that value down to zero. And then it will turn off the corner widget. Okay? Sure. So we're in our properties panel. So click on the properties tab. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So you'd like to go ahead and get different options. So hover over with your selection tool on any one of the corner widgets. Hold down your option key and option click on the widget. And of course, it makes you want to do this because who doesn't like to fidget with a widget? Mm -hmm. oh, trust me, anything to keep them occupied. Okay. So you can either set it directly here or you can go into your properties panel under your transform click on the more options, and set each one here manually, whatever size you want. Okay. Now, of course, circles have no corners, so we can't get to those. Okay? So there are no corner widgets on there. So let's go ahead and draw our polygon. Any shape polygon doesn't matter. Okay? And when we get to our corner widgets here, you'll notice that there is only one corner widget because it, by default, will widgets all the corners at once. So there's only one corner widget but I can simply click and pull on those and make those happen. Okay? There you go. Oh, and another thing, I realized that, okay, I have my nice little corner widget here, but I need more sides. All right. I've already drawn the shape. I panic. I uninstall Illustrator, reinstall it to get it to reset. Yeah? No, here, you want more sides? Right here. Click on the diamond on the right-hand upper portion of your polygon. Okay? Up and down. And we'll allow you to go ahead down all the way to three sides, all the way up to 11 sides, nice and quick. Right there. Mm -hmm. That's how you adjust 
the sides of a polygon. Your cursor should highlight with a little plus minus tool right there. That will do it for you. Okay. If you go to your transform panel, it will also give you your polygon properties here, which is where you can run the slider back and forth with a number of sides, change the shape of it as well, and also change the corner widgets too. Sound good? Okay, wonderful. Well, what we're gonna do now is, I'm just gonna quickly check here what we got the next one here. So we've been using the property panels, we got our live shapes right there. So we've been running through just the very basic shapes here, getting all of our shapes drawn here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom back out here. So we've been practice drawing our shapes. We got our shapes down pat right here, awesome. So the properties panel, We've been using the properties panel as we go here to go ahead and edit the properties. The properties panel has our transform items here along with our extra transform items right there. We can also use our transform panel to do the same thing as well as a standalone panel if we'd like to change the size, we'd like to change the edges and such. At the bottom of our properties panel though, we do have a whole bunch of quick actions here based on whatever it is that you may be working on. And here, you can go in and you can do basic things with your shapes here. Once you get more advanced with Illustrator, these are things that you may have to hunt down through your menus, but they're gonna be right here. Just a whole set of quick actions right there. And we're gonna use some of these things as we get in there. But the properties panel is new um, or updated in a lot of the Adobe applications, so we want to show you that. We're gonna keep using that right there. So the live shapes are the ones where you can go in and you can edit the sides and edit the corners. We've done some of that too, but I wanna show you a couple other things that we can do with live shapes that you may not know, okay? So if we go down to our slide number eight here, I have already revealed some of the good stuff here. And when we select our shapes here and we go into our transform panel, every time we click on any of these pre-existing shapes here, you're going to get a section down here that is going to give you the properties of whatever shape that you've selected right there. So if I have a, a rectangle and I want rounded corners, I can go to my transform panel and I can work with these rounded edges. If I have a polygon, I can change the number of sides. A rectangle, I can rotate and change my corner widgets and so on, okay? How many people like to do charts, pie charts, things like that, okay, awesome. Who doesn't like pie? Here's one thing, okay? Here's this little circle right here, perfect for a pie chart. This little handle sticking out the side right there. Yeah, that handle, okay? And you go ahead and you touch that and it looks like Pac-Man and you take that handle and you crank it around there then all of a sudden you get a section of a pie chart. I know, did you ever try to create a half a circle? Okay, well here's how you create a half a circle. You can go in and you can just take this and you can run that all over down to 180. Now the problem is is that this doesn't snap to any particular angle, which I really wish it did. Okay, wish list. But in our transform panel, you can grab the handle and whatever handle that you have grabbed right there, it allows you to go in and you can go and you can set that to be whatever angle that you want. Okay, you have the left handle, you have the right handle. But what good is a pie chart when a piece of the pie is missing? Okay, who wants a partially eaten pie? I want my pie. Well, you know that saying, I want my cake and eat it too? I want my pie and eat it too, and this is how you do it. At the bottom, we have the little pie swap. You see the little two pies right there with little arrows in between. If you click that, pie swap, right there. Okay, I'm not gonna go and copy and paste and then do the pie swap and put the pieces together because they never fit. Here's what I want you to do. I want both pieces. Hold down your option key. Option click on the little pie swap. You just got both pieces. Fit together beautifully, delicious as always. I know. So what is this deal with this option thing? That this is, uh, this is awesome? <laughs> I just wanted you to say that too. Awesome. Why, thank you. My mom thinks so too. So you select your shape that you've gone in and you've opened up the angle on your pie chart. And then in the transform panel where you see the two uh, pies that are flipped with little double-ended arrows, if you click back and forth, you're gonna get the opposites. But if you hold down your option key and option click on that once, it's going to copy it for you. 
Okay, what is this option key thing? Well, this option key is to duplicate. Select anything. Hold down your option key and your cursor is going to double up. Option, click and drag, copies anything. Okay, option, click and drag, there you go. Mm-hmm, yes. That's how you copy something. Anything, anything. So even in these transform panels, when you want to do something, if you want to go ahead and create a duplicate shape or make something bigger and duplicate it, you can go ahead, instead of just hitting return, you can hold option return and do that. Okay? If you follow along my blog, I do that all the time. Oh my gosh, option click and drag, fantastic. Okay? Yes. Yes. That's a little bit more tricky. I know. This is a beginning illustrator. Okay? <laughs> I have that on my website, but thank you for asking. You can't. You have to use the Pathfinder tool or our shape drawing tool, which we're going to get to. Yeah. Okay. So live shapes going through. We're going to get to our lines here, which we're going to go ahead and do next. So we've drawn all of our shapes. We're going to show you some basic lines here that we can go ahead and create with our line tool because we're going to draw lines, connect things to them, and make that all look nice and good and happy. Okay. So the line tools are also nested with our drawing tools as well. And you don't have the arc tool in there. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add that to there. For now, if you go to your tool panel, you can just grab the line tool and just simply click and drag. It doesn't constrain, so you will have to hold down your shift key if you would want a straight line. Now, if we go into the properties panel, we can go in and we can set the color of our line. If we click on our properties panel, we have the stroke color of our line. So you click on that little border right there, and that's going to call up your stroke panel. There's a few colors in there right now. When we get to colors, we're going to add some more. And you can click on the color of that stroke. You can choose the size of the stroke as well. And if you would like options for this stroke, click on the word stroke, which is actually a link, and that calls up your stroke panel. Now in the stroke panel, this is one of my personal favorites, other than option click and drag, which is totally delicious, hot dogging the ends. Okay. I don't like lines that are sharp and can take your eye out. I like to cap the ends, and you hot dog the ends. I hot dog the ends on everything. I hate hot dogs, but I love to hot dog the ends. That's what I mean by hot dogging the ends. Lines are going to end in a blunt end. So you have different ways that you can go ahead and end those lines. Sure. So you're in your properties panel, and you will see your fill and stroke and opacity. So click on the stroke color, to call up the stroke color, which is the first icon, set the size, and then click on the word stroke to call up the stroke panel. When you see a little dotted line under the name there, that is a link that's going to bring up a panel for you. Okay? Make sure your uh, line is selected, by the way, because if it's not selected, you probably won't see the same thing. Absolutely. Basic stuff with lines. Okay. With the stroke panel, we can also add heads and tails to the selected line as well. So when we click on the word stroke in the properties panel, we have our arrowheads that we can choose. They're large. Underneath, when you choose an arrowhead, you can set the scale way down so it doesn't scream at you. And you can set that to be any scale. You can also use tails as well that are huge. And you can scale those down as well. And inevitably, you'll have selected the wrong end and your arrow's going the wrong way. So to the right of your arrowhead selection, we've got the little double-ended arrows right there. That flips them. It doesn't do it on that one. But I'm glad you tried, because this is how you find these things. OK, so that's a basic line right there. Now, the arc tool is not something that is in, uh, readily available in the new Illustrator. So we're going to add that arc tool to our toolbar. So go down to the bottom of the toolbar where we have our three dots, and we're going to go ahead and click on the Edit Toolbar, and you will see the Arc tool is in the Extra Tools, 
and you're going to hold down your option key and you're going to option click and drag and you're going to drag that into your toolbar and it's going to then pop up and it will show up in your toolbar. Oh, then they fixed it. Fantastic. Because it wasn't doing it last week. Sure. So click on the three dots at the bottom of the toolbar. You'll get all of your tools. Any ones that are grayed out are, n are already in your toolbar. Any ones that are um, dark are ones that can be dra dragged into the toolbar. And you can simply click and drag that into your toolbar and park it anywhere that you want to. And then you can select that tool. Okay, just like that. Yep. And to pull them back out, you just pull them back out into that side panel, and there they are. Okay. So the arc tool, um, we can draw an arc or a quarter circle. Again, if you hold down your shift key, this allows you to go ahead and draw a perfect quarter circle. Why do I do this? Highlight noodles. When you're going and doing illustration and you want to put a nice little highlight on there, you got a circle, nice little highlight noodle, you hot dog the ends. I know, seems crazy, but it's a highlight noodle. Where do we use a highlight noodle? Very shortly. Because I can't just leave you with a noodle, a wet noodle, and just say, okay, there it is. Okay? Basic lines. Okay? Awesome. So now we're going to get into um, combining shapes together. This is fun. So it's not just drawing a circle, square, a line, or an arc, but it's actually taking these things and putting these things together to create these basic shapes. Adding them together, subtracting them, and making them what it is that you want your ideas to be. The Shape Builder tool is over here in the toolbar, and the shortcut is Shift-M if you're having trouble finding it. If you do Shift-M, you'll find it, and then you'll be able to see what it is. Okay? Your Shape Builder tool is this tool right there. I'll zoom in really close. That's the Shape Builder tool. This allows you to very quickly add or subtract more than two shapes. All right? So you have to have at least two shapes. Okay? I'm not good with math, but I know you have to have at least two in order for this to work. Some people try to do it with one. You can't tangle with one. Here's how it works. Draw two shapes. Shapes, not lines, shapes. They have to be closed. Take the circle, take a square, whatever it may be, those shapes. Now, we're going to select both of those shapes, and here's a way to select that's a whole lot easier than trying to go in and click on each one. Okay? If you want to select shapes, yes, you can go in and I can select one shape, hold down my shift key and select another shape, which takes too long, or I can just take my selection tool, start outside in any free area, and simply click and drag my selection over both or all and select them. Okay? That's how I go through and select my shapes. Now with the Shape Builder tool, which is Shift-M, when I take the Shape Builder tool, I have to have my shape selected in order for this to work. With my Shape Builder tool, I can hover over these areas, and you'll see this little gray screen that shows up here. If you want to connect these shapes together, and you see that little gray screen, all you do is start in any area that gives you that little gray screen, and just simply click and drag like you're drawing a line over all of them, basically saying, here's the ones I want to connect, and you've just connected those shapes. That's what Command Z is for. Okay? Now, that's connecting the two shapes together. Now, what's interesting here is what happens if you have shapes that may have different color fills or different strokes on them, and they're not the same. I may have these shapes that have totally different colors like that. And I go ahead and I select these shapes. I use my Shape Builder tool and I drag over them, and it puts it all together. So which one is going to win? It's where you start from. So here's my two shapes. Okay? I have my blue circle with the gray outline, and I have my green right here. I make sure that both of them are selected first before I do this. I use my Shape Builder tool, which is Shift-M. Do I want everything to have a green border? Then I'm going to start at my one with the green border and drag over both of them, what I click on first wins. So the fill, there is no fill on the first one, so it acquired the fill. If I drag back here, then it's going to go ahead and acquire that. Okay? So this is how you can use that to your advantage. Now what's interesting is we can go ahead and we can add these things together very easily. 
if we want to subtract these items. Okay, that was adding them together. And by the way, you can have multiple items too. If you have seven items, you want to put them all together. You can do that. I mean, it doesn't take much. If you want to create a cloud, you can just go ahead and create multiple circles here like this. Select them all. Use your shape builder tool and just color like you are in kindergarten again. And look, there's a cloud. Uh-huh. We don't draw anything in here. We just make shapes. Okay? There's your cloud. All right? How hard was that? Not at all. Awesome. Okay. That's how you do it. Now, we can also subtract shapes because we may want to end up with something that is going to be the result of taking shapes away. We've all used cookie cutters before, and you use the dough to go ahead and you cookie cutter the dough and then you pull the stuff around that you don't want. So if I want to make a leaf or an eyeball or something like that, or even a moon, I'm going to start off with a circle. And I'm going to have no stroke on it just to make this a little bit easier. And if I would like to go ahead and I would like to end up with a leaf or a circle or a moon or an eyeball, a couple different things that I can do. I'm going to option click and drag, and I'm going to duplicate that shape so I end up with two different shapes here. Let me make this a little bit lighter color so we can see. Okay, two circles. I don't want to join these together. All I want is the resulting shape inside, that leaf or that eyeball. I take those two shapes, I select them, I go and I use my awesome shortcut, which is Shift M to get my Shape Builder tool. And now I would like to take these areas away. Well, I notice when I hover over a shape, it says plus next to the cursor. I don't normally read or pay attention, but I, something tells me I need to. So here, if I hold down my Option key, that plus turns into a minus. Whatever I touch goes away. Okay? Pay attention to your cursor, because your cursor is telling you the story. And if you want to get good at this stuff, hold down every single key until that cursor changes. Because it's, something's going to happen. Okay? Well, there's our shape right there. Okay? All I did was I took those two shapes, and I just used my Shape Builder tool, Option key, Option minus, Option minus, gone. If I were to do the same thing here, and I wanted a moon, I could do this very easily as well. I could take one shape. I could duplicate that holding down my Option key, dragging them over so that they're slightly offset here. Select those two shapes, grab my Shape Builder tool, and select the pieces, holding down the Option key and getting rid of them. I have just created a moon. Did I draw the moon? Oh, no. For those of you who have tried to do that, you get the one side, the other side never matches, ever. There's a moon. There's a leaf. There you go. If you introduce a line in here as well, I can put a line here. And if I create a line going across something like this, I'm going to add a stroke color to this as well. There it is. If I would like the line to disappear where these shapes overlap, I can do the same thing. I'm going to make this line gray so we can see the line a little bit better here. I'm going to select both those shapes, Shape Builder tool. I just want to get rid of that line right there. Well, when you want to get to a line and you move your Shape Builder tool over that, okay, I'm going to hold down my Option key because I want to get rid of it. You're going to have to touch right there. And how do you know it's activated? That little red piece. Have you ever tried to snip out the middle of a line where it goes over something? Yeah. Yeah, here's how you do it. Okay? So, hold down the Option key. I touch that line. It highlights in red. I know I'm there. I Option click, and I have just taken that away. Pretty sweet. Shape Builder tool. Absolutely fantastic. Quick and easy. It adds, it subtracts. You have to have at least two objects in order to make it happen. Imagine the things that you can create with this. Well, wait, you don't have to because I'm going to show you. Let's combine some shapes together. You want to make an apple? Of course you do. And we need a highlight on the apple. OK. So the next page with combining shapes here, I've already drawn the shapes for you. We're going to make an apple, cup of coffee, just like that. OK. I know. It's that good. Apple. What's an apple? Two big round circles. That's all an apple is. We're going to move those circles over each other. Okay. Not completely, but enough to kind of create a little lumpiness on both sides right there. And select both of those with your selection tool. 
grab your Shape Builder tool, drag over all of them, there's the apple. Oh, but we haven't gotten to the selection with the corner widgets, and it's not going to be a tomato. Because there's one in every class, folks. There's one in every class. <laughs> okay, we're going to make a leaf. Two green circles right there. Take the circles, put them over so that they are halfway over each other. Select both of them. Shape Builder tool. Delete what you don't want. Hold down your Option key. I don't want that. I don't want that. Gone. Selection tool. Let's rotate this 45 degrees. Take your selection tool, hover outside the right-hand corner, hold down your Shift key, rotate it till it snaps right there. Move that over. I've already created the little stem for you, which is the arc. You take, put that right in there, scale your leaf right down, or better yet, I want to flip it the other direction. If you've used Illustrator, the flip was never there. You'd have to right-click, choose, reflect over the whole thing. They have finally added the flip tool. I know. I have been looking for the flipping tool forever. And there it is. Where's the flip tool? In your properties panel. So you have your transform, your width, and your height. There are your little flippets. Okay? There. You want to flip something? You can. And now you don't have to go through the tedious process. I won't even show you the tedious process. For those of you that are just using Illustrator, you came in at the right time. Okay? There's your apple. I know we're not done yet because we're going to round something, but we don't know how to round it quite yet. Okay? Either that or it's just a very plump cherry. All right? Coffee cup. Do we draw a coffee cup? Absolutely not. But we create one. This is our coffee cup shape. Here's what we do. I want you to take this upper rectangle, and I want you to just place it over the coffee cup so the bottom of that rectangle is about right in the middle of the oval. All right? I want you to select both of those shapes. Shape Builder tool. I want to get rid of the top two shapes. Hold down the Option key. I'm going to get rid of that shape, that shape right there. Nice. But what coffee cup has a round bottom? Yeah. Selection tool. I'm going to move the other rectangle into its place. It doesn't have to be centered. And I want to take off the bottom of this cup. So I'm going to select both of those shapes. Shape Builder tool. Hold down the Option key to turn that into a minus. Subtract what you don't want. Coffee cup. We need a handle. What's a handle? You're right, a circle. Take the circle tool. Go ahead and draw the circle right there. Now, I want to turn this into a donut. So I want to have just the stroke around my object and not the fill. Right now, it's the fill because that's the color that they was last used when we were working on that shape. So I want to flip the fill and the stroke colors so that I'm going to have the fill be nothing and the stroke be that color. Let's go to the bottom of our toolbar. At the bottom of our toolbar, I can see that my fill color is the brown, and there is no stroke color there. This little flip right here, that little double-ended arrow, flips my fill with my stroke. For you shortcut people, that is Shift X, flipping it. Okay, there is my stroke. Now the stroke isn't beefy enough, so I'm going to take that circle, go to the Properties panel, and I'm going to beef up that stroke. And then I can take that and position it right with my cup, and I am done. Uh huh. Did we draw that coffee cup? Absolutely not. But you all did an awesome job at creating it. You think you can't draw? Perfect. You can certainly create. Too many people get caught up in the fact that I'm not creative. Yes, you are. Everybody's creative. It's just having the right building blocks to go ahead and do this. And these are the building blocks. Simple. Every single thing. Circle, line, square, oval, star, whatever it may be. And you're all going to be a star. Because here's what's going to come next. Okay. We're going to go through and we're going to transform our shapes, not just scaling them up and down, but I want to show you how we're going to transform our shapes, and I am going to blow your mind to pieces. Okay? Because when you come out of here, you're going to have all these building blocks that are going to be amazing. So under these transform shapes here, I'm going to walk you through these next steps of transforming the shapes. 
we know how to take and select an object and scale it up or down with our selection tool. I want to fundamentally change the shape. I want to turn it into a parallelogram. Okay? I want to pull just one handle. Enough of this all four handle kind of thing. I want to totally lose control. Okay? So here's what we're going to do with a transforming shape. So we're going to jump down to artboard number 14. Okay. You want to create a water droplet? You want to create an egg? It's this fast. All right? You want to go ahead and create a parallelogram? It's this fast. Here's what you do. Let's start off with a parallelogram. Okay? First of all, we need a different tool, the direct selection tool. Okay? The direct selection tool that people say it never works. That's because you never read the directions. Because <laughs> had you read the directions and then you put the batteries in the right way, the direct selection tool would work. Because people are like, it never works that way. Oh, yes, it does. I'll show you when you don't have the switch in the right place. And the direct selection tool will be your next bestest friend. Okay, direct selection tool here. The key to the direct selection tool is do not have your object selected first. If you do have your object selected first, click off the object, okay? Then it's going to work for you. So I'm going to go over to the rectangle here, and I would like to turn this into a parallelogram. I just want to shift the whole thing off, skew it. Direct selection tool right here. I'm going to hover over the shape, and I'm going to touch the edge right there. The direct selection tool means exactly what it says. I want to directly select that line, or I want to directly select that corner. That's it. When I directly select that line, I can move just that line. When I directly select that corner, I can move just that corner. Here's the deal. When you directly select something, that anchor will be solid. You'll notice that all the other anchors are not solid. That means the ones that are solid color are the ones that you're moving. When you move a line segment, you are moving the anchors that are attached to that line segment. Why does this not work? Because here's what people do. They move their shape around with their selection tool. And then they jump over to their direct selection tool, and the shortcut for that is A. And every single one of the points is solid, which means every single one of the points is active, which means when you try to move something, it moves everything. That's exactly right. Click off it so it's not selected. Click back on the line segment. Directly select the line segment or directly select the anchor or the corner. You want to move just the anchor? Select just the anchor. Very specifically. It's not called the general tool. It's called the direct selection tool. You select exactly what you want. How do I move a couple points at once? Well, I can select a couple points at once. And if I want to select the end of this container, I can take my direct selection tool. And starting out in the free space of the artboard, I can click and drag over the areas that I would like to move. Okay? So I'm just dragging over that end. It activates those points so that I can move those all around. And interestingly enough, when I activate a specific corner, I get just that corner widget. Ah. See? I can select just that corner, and I get just that corner active which I can widget just that corner. I can change that corner, but I can widget this. How do you go through and widget just one corner without going through and selecting and just go use your direct selection tool? Either click on that corner or select the corner, and you can corner widget just that corner from everything else. That's just a rectangle that no longer looks like a rectangle. Let's jump over to our circle right here. We're going to turn this into an egg, and then we're going to turn it into a water droplet just like that. Okay. I want you to go in and I want you to select the top anchor point of that circle with your direct selection tool. You select it. I want to move it up. Now, of course, if you're not good and you move it up, this is what you do with your shape. So don't do that. Just use your up arrows. Okay. You can just hold your up arrow key. Kind of go slow. If you want to go fast, hold your shift up arrow. Look at that. You got a, yourself a perfect egg. Oh my gosh. Did you ever try to draw an egg? Good because this isn't a drawing class. There you go. Pretty awesome. You want to turn this into a water droplet? When you're working on a circle, circles have no corners. So this is what we call, so we have our um, corner points, which form the rectangle, and then this is going to be our smooth points, which forms our lines. Smooth points have those little pull handles right there. We are not going to get into pull handles. Okay? Yeah. That's the pen tool, and you need a commercial driver's license for that. 
With this, what I want to do is I just want to turn this nice smooth corner into a corner point to turn into a little water droplet. With that point selected, I'm going to go over to my properties panel, and underneath our fill and stroke, we have our convert. And I can suck those handles in, turn it into a corner point. I can go ahead and turn it into a smooth point. Okay, that's it. Those are the only two kind of points. Smooth corner, smooth corner, egg drop, egg drop, right there. Yeah. Uh huh. And when you have a water droplet, you have to have a highlight noodle. Highlight noodle is when you take your arc and you hold down your shift key and you draw your arc and then you go ahead, do your stroke properties, you hot dog the end, and you make it white, or we can just keep it blue for now. And then there's a little highlight noodle, and now we have a little water droplet with a highlight noodle. Yeah. When I opened up this file, it only gave me these particular colors, but we're gonna go ahead and do colors very shortly. If you create a new document, you're gonna have the full palette of colors right there. I cleaned it all up to make it pretty simple. Yeah. Really? So here, if you want your palette up all the time, go into your window menu. Which palette are you talking about, the color palette? Yeah, so go into the window menu, and then go to your swatches panel, which is gonna be down near the bottom, and you can call up your swatches panel, and then it'll stay up there for you. Yes, and that's because you're opening a picture. If you go under File, Open and Open a Picture, it will not give you the colors in the swatch panel. Copy that picture into another one, and you'll have your colors. I'll show you. Okay, so when you get into all these other shapes, you can use your direct selection tool to edit all of these shapes very easily. I want to show you one thing that's going to blow your mind. All right, so here's what I want you to do. We're going to draw a star, okay? But I'm not going to draw a star. Here's what I want you to do. Take your star tool, and I want you to click on the page with a star tool. And by the way, how many people use millimeters all the time? Okay, great, because I love millimeters because they're so smart, but here's the deal. Okay, I want you to go in and I want you to make a star that is gonna be 50 millimeters and 25 millimeters, but you're like, yeah, but I don't get millimeters. Here's what you do. If you're not using that particular method of measurement, literally type in 50 mm and then 25 mm, and it's going to convert it to whatever measurement that you're using, okay? And I also want you to have 13 points, okay? And there's our star right there. And here's what's going to blow your mind, all right? Here we go. I told you every shape that has corners has corner widgets. Why doesn't my star have corner widgets, okay? And the reason why is because you couldn't handle the number of corner widgets 15 minutes ago, but I think you've warmed up to the fact. Now what I want you to do is select your shape with your selection tool, and then go and select your direct selection tool when you have that shape done. Oh my gosh, look at those corner widgets. Now here's what I want you to do. This is gonna be fun. Because every corner has a corner widget, it just doesn't show up on a star unless you have your direct selection tool active when it's selected. If you take your corner widgets and you pull any one of them in from the points here, and you pull them in all the way, this is going to pull them in until it turns red, okay? That's the maximum widgetness that you have there. Don't pull it all the way in. I want you to find the happy medium between all the way pointy and all the way in, someplace in between there, okay? Something like that, all right? And it looks like a kind of a little amoeba thing right there, all right. Okay. But we don't want to pull them all the way in because what I'm going to show you next won't work if we maximum widget this. We have three different types of corners. Rounded, which is what we see here. We have flat, and we have inverse rounded. So holding down your option key, I want you to option click on any one of those corner widgets once. And then all of a sudden you get a little cold virus. Doesn't it look like a cold virus? Yeah. Now I want you to option click on one of those corner widgets again, and you just made yourself a gear. Did you ever try to draw a gear? Absolutely not, because you're not that crazy. But again, you do not need to draw these things, folks, okay? If you don't have these, it may be because you pulled the corner widgets too far in, and if you pull them too far in, you're gonna get very little stubby gear teeth, okay? So just select it, click on it with your selection tool, and you can pull your corner widgets in or out and cycle through your corners. I told you, 
it wasn't going to be the most as best as ever. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's the direct selection tool. All righty. You want more? Okay. We're going to get some color swatches here. So, color swatches. Different ways to create color swatches or call up color swatches in Illustrator. You want a whole list of colors? Not a problem. In our properties panel, we can go over to our appearance section where we have our fill and our stroke. Click on the little icon to the left of the fill or stroke and it's going to call up your swatches panel. I've cleaned out the swatches panel so we can make our own. Okay? When you call up the swatches panel from the properties panel here, you're going to have two icons at the top. The squares are your swatches and then your color picker to go ahead and choose the color from. You can go ahead and use your sliders to pick the color that you want or you can just simply hover over the entire spectrum at the bottom and pick any color that you'd like. Now, once you select a color from here, if you don't have any shape active and you select a color, that's your new default color, by the way, okay, by doing that. If you would like to add this to your swatches panel, you'll notice just by picking a color, it doesn't automatically add it to your swatches panel. So what you do is you click on this little cheese grater here, okay, and that is the cheese grater right there. You can choose create a new swatch and that will bring up your swatch panel that you can then create a swatch and click OK. Yeah. My panel doesn't the um, it, it may be because go back to your selection tool and see if that. Okay. Try selecting something and see if it comes up there. Okay, and that may, be, that may be it, because if you have nothing selected, then the appearance may not be there. Okay. Now, once you go ahead and you create a new color swatch, and you click OK, by default, add to my library is selected. And when I do that, it automatically pops up my library. Why? Because if I create this color swatch here and I'd like to use it in Photoshop or InDesign, I don't want to have to recreate this color. My color can be right in my library, and I can grab from there. Now, it's not the easiest way to do this through the properties panel, so quite frankly, what I like to do is go into the window menu, go down to my swatches panel, and create my colors here. So if I call up my swatches panel, so it's all by itself right here, this to me makes a little bit more sense. Okay, you click on the cheese grater. Yes, that's the cheese grater right there. Okay, older versions of the application said a little triangle, and it literally looked like somebody was grating cheese. That's why it's the cheese grater. In the swatches panel, if you click on the cheese grater, you choose to create a new color swatch. If you would like to go ahead and do a new color swatch there, you can. You click OK and choose whatever colors you'd like. Click OK and it automatically adds it to your swatches panel. If you are not good with color and you would like preset list of colors, in the lower left hand corner of your swatches panel, that's library books right there. Okay? If you click on the swatch libraries, here is a whole host of pre-made colors for you in Illustrator. Done. You want to do something interesting and you're looking for colors of food, go down to the food section, ice cream, as if you need something even sweeter than this class is. <laughs> Choose that and all those colors will pop up in a color panel. Pre-done colors. You want those in your swatches panel? Go to your little pop-up menu from whatever colors that you chose. Click on that folder and hold and drag that folder into your swatches panel and you now have your banana split colors. Okay? Yeah. yeah. These won't be because these are going to be based on your file that you're working on now. There is, but it's not very easy the last time I tried. Okay? Yes. I think I did a blog post on that because it's one of those things that would be nice to have those colors there the whole time. So that's how we can go ahead and create new colors or use existing colors in there. Now, with that, we can then take any one of our shapes and we can select our shapes and we can add a fill and or a stroke based on those color palettes right there. Now, the one thing that I do like having my swatch panel up here for is because when I'm using these colors here and I'm selecting the colors, 
I don't like to go over to my properties panel the whole time and click on the fill color and then click on my swatches and get the color and then go back and click on my stroke color to go ahead and add the stroke color and do that. I like to have my swatches panel right here so it's very easy for me to go in and just reference all these colors right there. It's great. Then I can click on one of these but inevitably you've got the wrong thing selected. It's like, oh, I wanted to make the stroke that color with that and it's like, oh, you know, then you have to go back and you have to, in your swatches panel, basically activate or bring whatever you want to the front. If you'd like to then fill that shape, you need to bring the fill to the front or the stroke to the front. Now, what I like is just dragging the swatch from the panel and dropping it right on my object. Okay, just like that. Grab it, drop it right on the object, right there. Yeah. Now, these backpacks. Yes, I created these a couple of weeks ago on my blog. Here they are. They're yours. Okay. Client has said, I really like the backpacks. I want you to go ahead and change the colors. I want different, different shades of colors. Okay. Yeah, we're getting near the end. There's no way we can go ahead and select everything else. Good, because we don't have time for that. But I need to change the colors anyway. So here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to just do a global color shift on those colors. I'm going to select click and drag with my selection tool over the right hand backpack. And I'm going to select the whole backpack and all the shapes and all the fills and all the strokes and everything and I want to edit those colors globally. So I'm going to recolor the artwork, which in the properties panel I can go over and under the quick actions at the bottom of the properties panel is recolor. I can also find that under the edit menu, under edit, recolor artwork. Either way, okay? So edit, and this is in the handout notes too. So in the properties panel at the bottom there, recolor, and I do that. And it comes up with this. And it's like no one's reading the directions on this. Okay? Don't. Here's what you do. In the recolor artwork on the upper left-hand side, click on the edit button. Okay? You have edit and you have assign. Click on the edit button. Now what I want you to do, don't touch anything else here, the only thing that I want you to do is I want you to link these colors together. So you see your color wheel, lower right hand corner is a little link that slash through it means these colors are not linked to each other. Click on it to the two little links. Now, you can either use your sliders at the bottom here to change the hue and saturation and do that. Or you can go ahead and like anything, you know, it's your birthday and you just want to go ahead and ride that little pony, just grab on any one of the handles here and just rotate around. And it's going to globally change all the colors, but keep the color harmonies all together. Okay? For those of you that have ever tried to make that work, now you know. Okay? Now, if you want to edit the color separately and target a specific color, unlink in that center, or unlink that section, and then you can click on any one of these little color dots right here and you can edit that color and it's going to specifically target that color. Not bad, huh? And this is where you can take artwork and you can very quickly globally recolor it without having to go and select the fill and the stroke and pick the right color, do all that other stuff. It's wonderful. And now we have to go ahead and do some type. I know. There it is. So here we are with the font menus. And Illustrator has created a lot of much more usable features over the last couple of renditions of this. And so we could read through all of this stuff, but we're going to jump right in and we're going to show the last bit of type. And we're going to boot you out of here so you can get some refreshments and talk about how awesome Illustrator is over whatever it is you're eating or drinking. Okay. So a type tool in Illustrator. Okay. If you simply type the letter T on your keyboard, you're going to get the type tool. Makes it very easy. All right. Two different kinds of type in Illustrator. There is point type. Point type means you take your type tool, you click at a specific point, and you begin to type right along. And it goes on forever. If you want to break the line, you have to hit return. Why is this good? Well, let me show you what the other one is, and then you can determine which one is going to be what you want. Okay? 
if I click on this with a selection tool, it looks like there's a bounding box around it. It's lying to you. Okay? What I would like you to do next is I'm going to do a lot of text in here. What do I use this for? Infographics. I need a one or two name um, little caption, or you want a, a number in here. This is what I use. But I want a paragraph that I want to be able to edit the shape of this in order to have the type flow. So I'm going to take my type tool, and surprisingly enough, you know why it has a little box around the type tool? It's waiting for you to draw a box. If you take your type tool and you click and drag and draw an area in which you want your type, then it will fill it with type, and now we have our type. Now, what's the difference? Okay. Well, here's the difference. When you click and drag and draw a container, you can then take your selection tool and you can pull on any one of your pull handles and allow your text to reflow. So if you're doing a layout with multiple paragraphs and you want to be able to have your type flow, this works great. If you just simply clicked with your cursor on the page and you select it with your selection tool and you think that's a bounding box, hello, you pull that bounding box, hello, no. So what's the difference? Point type, you simply click on that point and you just type. And yes, you can break the lines, but you'd have to go in. And you can double click with your selection tool to get into your type editing. You don't have to go over to your type tool and do that. Just simply double click. If you use InDesign and now Photoshop the same way, just double click and it gets you into your editing. You can break this type. But whenever you go with your selection tool to move this and move this all around and you stretch it, it will completely ruin the type. Whereas if you have a container or area type tool, you can move this container around and it will reflow. Another advantage, you can rotate your point type, but if you rotate your area type, the box rotates and it does not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe what you want, maybe what you don't want. Probably what you don't want. Mm -hmm. Okay. So over here, I have some preset type and just going through some of the type menus. Again, if you would like to select a type, just select it with your selection tool and double click and it activates your type cursor. Okay? Now, because you've seen a lot of the new features and you're going to see more of the new features with Adobe Fonts that used to be Typekit, when you select the type in here, over in our properties panel, we have our character formatting, which allows us to go through and see our fonts. But what's awesome with this is that just like in Photoshop now, you can just simply run over all your typefaces without even having to click on them. You can just use the drop-down menu, click on the drop-down menu, and just hover over them and run through them right there. You can use your scroll wheel and scroll through all those fonts without even having to click because deep down in every person is a client. I know what I like when I see it. And of course, nobody knows what all their fonts look like, so this is really cool to be able to go through and do this. And I'm sure you're going to learn more about the new Adobe fonts and the Typekit now that we can synchronize all that with it. That's pretty awesome. So of course, we can find more fonts here. They've changed this. It used to be a Typekit symbol. There's our font right there. We can adjust the point size and the letting of this as well with our type. Do that, adjust our paragraph formatting as well, left, centered, right, justified. Pretty basic stuff. The biggest thing is now you can have unlimited number of fonts to be synced, and you can go through and edit your text, pick out your type fonts very quickly, find out what it is that you like, and be able to edit that text. If you want more type options, you can click on the three little dots in the type section under the properties panel, and you get more options here to create all caps. And here's one nice thing that I like about this too. You don't actually, if you want to format all of your copy, you don't have to have all of your copy selected with your type tool. If you have your type text or your area text selected with your selection tool, you can just select it and apply the fonts to it. You don't have to highlight the whole thing, which is really nice. Okay? So, don't have to go through and select it and forget that you've selected something. One last thing. When we have area type here, and we move this container all around wider and narrower, it reflows. But when we try to rotate it, it doesn't rotate the text. I want to do this and I want to rotate my text. This lollipop sticking out the right-hand side. This converts area text to point text and vice versa. If I take my area text and I double-click on this lollipop, 
it now becomes point text, which means I can rotate this here, but if I stretch the box, it doesn't stretch the type, or it does stretch the type. If I take my point text, which I got just by clicking, and I try to change the box, it messes it up. But if I take that lollipop sticking out the side and double click, that converts it to area text, which then I can then control the size of the container to reflow. Do you feel like you know Illustrator now? Not bad, huh? The direct selection tool, oh my gosh, the flip, the option tool, creating a gear out of the star, oh my gosh. The shape builder tool, add, subtract, all that stuff. The pie pieces, absolutely. You want more of that? You can go right to my blog here. You can sign up for that every single week. And you can go ahead and do all this stuff. No, it is not difficult. Yes, it is awesome. You too can have an awesome time. You want a happy toaster? So easy. It is. Uh, my contact information, I think, is on the very first page of the slide here. Oh, I guess it isn't. I had put it on one of them, I know. So, jasonhoppy.com. Absolutely. I can most certainly do that, yep. So you want to put type around a corner? Thank you, folks. I know it was a long day. Appreciate everybody suffering through the whole thing. I try to make it as awesome as possible because I love it, as if you didn't know, okay? So go out and have a great time, get some rest, fill out the surveys. We rely on those surveys to give us feedback. Appreciate it, everybody. If you want to take it again, I'm here tomorrow, I'm here Wednesday. Tell your friends, tell your family, go out and do awesome things with Illustrator. So jasonhoppy.com, J-A-S-O-N, H-O-P-P-E, dot com, there you go. So type on a path. Any shape that you want, yep, doesn't matter. When you do shape, uh, when you do type on a path, it doesn't matter what fill or stroke you have on the circle, it's always gonna disappear, okay? You can't use the normal type tool, you have to use the type on a path tool, okay? That's the difference. If you use the type tool, it's gonna think that you wanna put it inside the shape, which is not what you want. So when you use the type on a path tool, it's like one of those little things that you see at the car dealerships, you know, little blow up floppy dolls, okay? You take those little arms that you see and you touch the edge where you want it to start. You have to be very specific on touch. You just can't click. You have to take this and then you have to specifically click there and then your type goes on a path. You want options for that. That is under the type menu and type on a path options, okay? But the key to that is make sure you use a type on a path tool and make sure you specifically click where those little Gumby arms come out of it, right there, in order to activate that path. You'll notice that any fill or stroke will disappear because Illustrator can't do two things at once. Absolutely. So for those of you that want that website again, there it is, so you have that. So was it worth it, staying this late? I think so too. I'm glad I did. <laughs>